Welcome on into the Broncos Breakdown by Chat Sports. Matthew Peterson here previewing this week four matchup for Denver as they look to make it two in a row on the road and knock off the New York Jets, a two and one ball club that has won two games since losing on Monday night week one in Santa Clara. So I want to run through some keys to victory, how the Broncos can beat the Jets, and I'll give you some predictions along the way. But let's kind of start by just setting the table a little bit here and getting everyone familiar with the Denver offense and the New York Jets defense, and then vice versa. So the Broncos offense coming into this matchup, a couple of things that really jump out to me. Of course, the turnovers, not ideal, but they did a much better job of protecting the football in Tampa Bay. But look at the red zone and third down numbers, and then compare that to the Jets' defense, right? The Broncos' offense already struggling to convert when they get near the end zone. The Jets' defense, one of the best in the biz at keeping opponents out of their end zone. As for the Jets' offense against the Denver defense, Vance Joseph has done a much better job to open up this season than last year. The Jets' offense, I think, has gotten better as the season has gone along, with Aaron Rodgers getting a little bit of rust knocked off from his first game pretty much as a Jet, minus four or five snaps the year before. But if we're looking closely here, how about the Jets' offense? Number one on third down, converting over half of the time, and very good in the red zone at punching it in. So those are going to be two key elements that Denver has to try and reduce the Jets' success at. So when it comes to taking down the Jets, we're going to come. We're going to run through three keys to victory for Bo Nix and Sean Payton to pick up win number two on this road trip. But first, I was looking over the subscriber numbers as I dived into the analytics here. And last September, we picked up over 1,100 subscribers. This September, we're not even quite at 800 yet. So we still have about a week or so to go. But if you have not subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. Help us continue to grow as a channel so we can get more studio space so I can get you guys more content throughout the year. Now, key to victory, number one, more Bo Nix and Tyler Beatty rushes, which, by the way, quick sidebar, man, you guys were really passionate about the pronunciation of Tyler Beatty yesterday, so just bravo to everyone that went to war in the comments. But let's talk about the Broncos' ground game last week, which finally came to life in the second half. It was actually interesting how the Broncos had 14 rushes in the first half and 14 rushes in the second half. A completely balanced split. The difference, though, was the Broncos' ground game in half number two rushed for about 90 more yards than they did in half number one. Now, why is that? Well, that's because they started to go to a couple of things that were working, like Bo Nix and Tyler Beatty, who really emerged. I mean, Beatty more so than Nix when it comes to emerging because we, we saw traces and flashes of Nix's mobility in the first two weeks of the season. But look at the second half rushing stats. Beatty, eight carries, 66 yards. Nix, three carries, 28 yards. For a team, 14 carries, 90 yards. So I hope that Denver and wink, wink, Sean Payton here look at these numbers and go, hey, this pretty much sealed the win for us. It makes sure that we were able to shut the door on the Buccaneers' comeback bid. Let's pick up where we left off in week four with these two guys being the focal point of our ground game. Now, you don't really want your quarterback to be the number one rusher, but right now there really is no other option because the Broncos' running back room is underperforming outside of a second-half surgence from Tyler Beatty. Now, here's what Sean Payton said after the win. We got to a few quarterback read runs. Your quarterback becomes a threat, and so there are t there were two or three instances where it might have been a give to Beatty or a quarterback keep. I think there were a couple of designs that helped us, and then we blocked it well. More of that. Like, Sean Payton showed us how you can win a football game with this roster, and that comes with a comfortable quarterback, which then grows from the like the soil of a good ground game. Let's invest in that soil. That soil is Tyler Beatty and then a couple of design quarterback runs for Bo Nix here and there. That should hopefully try and loosen the box a little bit when it comes to the quarterback runs because you don't just assume, okay, if we stack the box, the ball's going to go to the running back. No, now you got to kind of set the edge a little bit. You can't come crashing in, so it's going to be easier on the offensive line. Now, of course, there are pros and cons to it, the con being your quarterback might take a couple of hits 
You don't want that to happen. But for now, that appears to be the only recipe for some level of success on the ground. Now, let's talk about what the Jets offer when it comes to run stopping. Week one, they got ran over by Jordan Mason. Who? Yeah, the Jets made Jordan Mason popular. Week two, they got ran over by Tony Pollard. Week three, they finally start to patch things up a bit and slow down Ramondre Stevenson dramatically. So an improvement clearly has been made week to week, but still, this is not one of the better run-stopping units in the NFL. Now, before we get on to the rest of my keys to victory for Denver, I do want to show some love to our sponsor today, which is Factor. Meet your wellness goals thanks to the chef-crafted meals of Factor, which include options like Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals are dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. So no matter how busy you are, you'll always have time to enjoy nutritious, great-tasting meals. With 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week, you'll always have new flavors to explore. Treat yourself to restaurant-quality meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, and blackened salmon. Head to factormeals.com slash broncoschat50 and use code broncoschat50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code broncoschat50 at factormeals.com slash broncoschat50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is active. I put all that information in the comments and description of today's video. Key to victory number two, pressuring Aaron Rodgers. This one comes with a little bit of an asterisk to it. I am not advocating that if you blitz the crap out of Aaron Rodgers, you are going to have a ton of success. Aaron Rodgers is one of the best quarterbacks in NFL history because he's good at a lot of things, okay? It's not just one trick. One of the best things, though, is he knows how to handle pressure well. He knows how to get the ball out quickly and to put it to the right place. He knows where to go with the football when he walks up to the line of scrimmage based on what the defensive look is. So I'm not advocating to just blitz Aaron Rodgers and hopefully you sack him a couple of times. No, but we can notice that Denver had a tremendous amount of success in week three, primarily because the pass rush finally started to get to the quarterback. Four sacks total in the first two weeks, and then an explosion for seven sacks against, I would say, a pretty good Bucks offensive line. I don't think it's like a bunch of great all-pro Pro Bowl talent across the board. Tristan Wirfs is awesome, but I mean, still, seven sacks against any NFL offensive line is worth noting. Now, the real reason, though, I want to pressure Aaron Rodgers is I want to pressure Nathaniel Hackett. We know him all too well. And I feel like this is an offensive coordinator that may not handle pressure, and I mean literal pressure from the defense right up the middle against a Jets offensive line that just lost a starter last week in Morgan, Morgan Moses. So they've got rookie Olu Fashanu starting at right tackle. I would like to see some pressure applied to Nathaniel Hackett and see how he handles that from a play calling standpoint. Plus, just from an actual analytic standpoint here, when Nathaniel Hackett had a quarterback in 2022 that did not handle pressure very well, like Russell Wilson, whenever the Broncos gave up four or more sacks in the game, the team went one and six. Now, in case you're wondering, that one and six mark, that's bad, but I mean, obviously, when you give up four-plus sacks, you're probably not going to do very well across the board for any coach or any GM or, sorry, any quarterback. But let's compare that to that same season across the entire National Football League. Teams that gave up four more sacks went about a 30% win rate compared to, what was it, 14 for Denver? So twice as good. So to me, Nathaniel Hackett, as a play caller, does not handle pressure very well. He also doesn't handle falling behind the sticks quite well, which in his defense, which is a rare thing for me to say, not many OCs or quarterbacks like falling behind the sticks. But to me, I think this is not so much about applying pressure on Aaron Rodgers. I want to see how Hackett as a play caller makes the right calls when the blitz starts coming or when the pass rushers start getting through this Jets offensive line. Now, quick random question here, but Bo Nix right now, after Monday Night Football, is the last rookie quarterback to throw a touchdown pass. 
Caleb Williams did it against the Colts this past Sunday. And then Jaden Daniels, who, by the way, had a tremendous outing. I could say the by far the best rookie performance of all the rookies this year and one of the better rookie performances, period, in recent memory. But will he get touchdown pass number one on Sunday? Give me a yes or give me a no. And bonus, if you can tell me who he throws it to. Key to victory number three, I want a Riley Moss breakout game. Riley Moss, I think, has actually been pretty good this year. I think PFF has him ranked as one of the best corners in football. But the reason why I'm calling out Riley Moss and not Pat Sertan is because Pat Sertan's going to do a great job with Garrett Wilson. I'm not concerned about that. But let's not completely forget about Alan Lazard, who was basically relegated last year. But with his old buddy Aaron Rodgers back under center, he has reemerged this year. Look at the numbers he's put up. He's arguably done better than Garrett Wilson. 148 yards and three touchdowns. So to me, I think just saying, hey, take out Garrett Wilson with Pat Sertan is not going to be enough. Okay, let's say you do that. Let's say you hold Garrett Wilson to three grabs for 45 yards. Alan Lazard is very capable with Aaron Rodgers of leading this air game as well, which is where Riley Moss comes into play, right? Where I want to see Riley Moss also have a stellar performance. Again, he's been good this year. But I feel like this is going to be a very important task because let's go through the quarterbacks that Riley Moss has gone up against. Week one, he goes up against Geno Smith. Week two, it's a rushing attack with Justin Fields. Week three, it's Baker Mayfield. Week four, it's a big jump up to Aaron Rodgers, future Hall of Famer. So if Patrick Tan even just removes or limits Garrett Wilson, I'm not convinced that's going to be enough with how good Rodgers is and how good he is with Alan Lazard. So that's why I want to see Riley Moss really come out and just join Sertan in shutting down both of Rodgers' go-to targets, and we'll go from there. Now, who you got in this game? Let me know. Broncos or Jets? I'm, I'm torn. I'm torn. The Jets have improved the last two weeks. It's the second straight road game. Broncos are practicing in West Virginia this week. This is not going to be an easy task. I'm going to go with the Jets, but if I told you before this road trip began that Denver would go one-on-one, one-and-one in it, I think we'd all be pretty happy with that result. So I'm going to be honest. I'm just going to give you my gut pick. My gut tells me the Jets are going to win this game, but believe me, I would love to be wrong. All right, that will do it for us on today's episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and hanging out with us. Enjoy the rest of your day and your week, and I'll see you all later.